Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a problem with Z and its complex conjugate. What is Z? Z is a complex number. What are complex numbers? Well, complex numbers can be defined as A plus BI where A and B are real numbers and I squared is equal to negative one. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I also have another channel that focuses on algebra and number theory. A little bit of geometry here and there. Great, so to be able to solve this problem, I'm going to use two methods. And I just wanna say that this is a homemade equation. You can just come up with your own equations and call them homemade. And if you have any suggestions, let us know in the comment section. And you'll let me know also which method you like better. And if you have a third method, definitely feel free to let us know. Don't hesitate. So first method, is gonna focus on replacing Z with A plus B I because it's the name of this channel. It also solves the problem, right? Hopefully. Let's see. We're gonna go ahead and find Z bar from here, which is complex conjugate. It's the unique number such that when you add it to Z or multiply by Z, you always get a real answer, which is nice, right? If you multiply two complex numbers, A plus B I and A minus B I, you get sum of two squares. Something to remember because sum of two squares can be factored in the complex world. So let's go ahead and make the replacements. Three times z, which is a plus bi, plus two times a minus bi, and then that is divided by two z, or not two z, sorry, I had to make that joke, minus z bar, which is a minus bi, and this is supposed to equal 23 minus 28i divided by 13. How nice, right? Where does that number come from? We'll see in a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and distribute and simplify. Uh, 3a plus 2a, for example, is gonna give me 5a, and 3bi minus 2b, or not 2b, one more time, last time, hopefully, and that'll give me plus abi, right? And that is divided by 2a minus a, and then 2b plus b, that's a three bi. Is it abi? Where does the abi come from? Wait a minute, it's not abi, it's just bi. <laughs> okay, I don't know how I came up with the abi. A plus three bi. Okay, here we go. That's equal to this. So the problem here is we have i here in the denominator, but we don't have i. So how do we handle that? We take the left-hand side, and multiply by its conjugate, okay? And you decide by looking at the denominator, a minus three bi and a minus three bi. It should equal the right-hand side, okay? Cool, cool. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this by using the distributive property, 5a times a is 5a squared, and then this is minus 15 ABI, this is where we get the ABI. I think that's what confused me. Plus ABI and then minus 3B squared I squared. Did I tell you? I squared is negative one. So that'll give us plus 3B squared from here. And at the denominator, we'll have sum of two squares. Remember that? A squared plus 9B squared. And then this equals 23 minus 28I divided by 13. Now let's go ahead and simplify the numerator a little bit. We get 5a squared plus 3b squared minus 14abi all over a squared plus 9b squared equals 23 minus 28i divided by 13. Now how do you solve a problem like this? Well, wouldn't it be nice if the numerator equals the numerator and the denominator equals the denominator? Let's go ahead and check it out. So what if this equals 13? First of all, I'm looking for nice solutions. So perhaps A and B are integers, probably, right? And in this case, A equals two, like four plus nine is 13. So it looks like A equals two and B equals one is gonna work, but those are not the only numbers probably, right? We'll check because if you even, even if you use a negative A or negative B, you'll still get the same sum, but we have to check the numerator as well. So for example, this one, 
If n a is 2, b is 1, 5 times 2 squared plus 3 times 1 squared is going to be 23. So that checks. And 14ab will be 28. That checks as well. Nice. Is that always the case though? Well, here's the thing. This is a ratio. So even though that looks like a, two equations, it's actually a single equation. Because if you write this separately, like for example, 5a squared, let me clear this area because I, I don't want to keep scrolling up and down, up and down. It's kind of confusing, isn't it? Hopefully you've seen this, right? Now, we can also go ahead and write it this way. 5a squared plus 3b squared divided by a squared plus 9b squared. And then minus 14ab over a squared plus 9b squared. And then the whole thing is multiplied by i. And then this equals 23 over 13 minus 28 over 13i. So we can kind of make a one-to-one -one correspondence. This equals this. So that gives us, again, a ratio which we could possibly use to find the values of a and b. You know what? This is kind of one thing that's kind of nice about this approach is that you can find a over b from here. Because take a look. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. We get 65a squared plus 39b squared equals 23a squared plus, what is 23 times 9? I think it's 207, right? 180 plus 27. Yeah. 207 b squared. Yeah. And let's see. Put the a squares together. Uh, we were going to get 42a squared equals, what is 207? Oh, by the way, 207 is 9 times 23. Hmm. I don't think we're going to have a common factor, but anyways, uh, maybe I made a mistake somewhere and included, maybe did not include everything. I don't know. But from here, you should be able to get, if, let's just do 207 minus 39, because their difference might be divisible by maybe 6 or 7. Okay, this is going to give me hmm, 168, right? Is that correct? Good, awesome, because that's 4 times 42. Okay, great. Surprise. So from here, A can be 2 or negative 2. So we can kind of, wait, what happened to B squared? I just made it hocus pocus. Okay, sorry about that. I just assumed B equals 1, I guess. So here's what I was trying to do. This should be B squared. There you go. And then from here, of course, cancel out and end up with 4 anyways. But from here, you can get A equals 2B or not 2B. What can I do? Or A equals negative 2B. And then you can plug it into the other equation and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Definitely um, 2 plus i satisfies this equation. But if you also take multiples of this number, like k times 2 plus i, it's also going to work. And you know why? Because of the ratio. Remember, I told you I was going to present two methods. So let me go ahead and quickly show you. Did I say two methods? I probably did. I can't remember. Very forgetful. So here's the second method. Second method kind of uses properties of ratios. So I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by z. Okay. So that gives me the following. And of course, right hand side is, right -hand side is going to stay the same. Z's cancel out. And if you call this like a ratio, let's just call this maybe w, complex number. So this will be w as well. And from here, we're going to get 3 plus 2w divided by 2 minus w equals this number. And guess what? You can solve for w and then, oops, and then once you solve for w, that'll give you what? z bar over z. Let's say you got a number from here, complex number, and then you can kind of solve for z from here. Anyways, you can do the rest because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.